Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 41st show of the Spin It Social Hour. My name is Stephen Kaplan, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here with everyone tonight. Wow, 41 shows. Um, I'm always amazed that, uh, you know, that we've done this many, but uh, it's the passion and the love of photography that brings us here every two weeks now on Thursday evenings at nine o'clock and um, bringing on some of the great photographers from around the world. So my name is Stefan Kaplan. I am a social media and visual specialist, and I am a consultant for many brands and nonprofits, including uh, the Pulitzer Prizes, AARP, the Jackson Charitable Foundation. I've worked with the likes of the Pul of um, sorry, <laughs> of Sri Srinivasan and his Digi Mentors group, and. Um, well, I'm also a retired and a former photo editor from the New York Times. I was there for 15 plus years as a photo editor and a freelance photographer. So it is an absolute pleasure, like I said, to bring this show to you every week. We started it when the pandemic first hit to basically um, bring on photographers to let them show their work, tell their stories and get them more, get their name out there more, because let's face facts, this has been a long road. It's been a really hard road for many, and this has been uh, a tough time. So it is my delight uh, to bring all of my skills together as a former photo editor and photographer, and, uh, and photographer, and also now a multimedia specialist, and produce this show with the likes of Jonathan Borstein, who's my co-producer, who you'll meet in just a bit. But tonight we're here to uh, welcome Tai Chi on the show and tell you all about his work and give him the buildup that he deserves. So I met Tai through a group called the Jersey, um, uh, the Jersey Photographers Meetup Group and uh, Jersey City, excuse me. And it was it was really I looked at his photos and I said, you know what, I have to have Tai on one day because he's so creative that I wanted to give him the exposure that he deserves. So let's do that right now. My photography style tends to lean towards the dramatic. I often feel inspired by films and I like to make everything bold, detailed, <clears throat> and kind of in your face sometimes. I get accused of not being realistic sometimes, but the point of my photography is to escape reality, says Tai Chi about his portrait and architectural photography. His interest in photography began when his grandmother gave him a complete set of the World Book Encyclopedia. The encyclopedia in general, and the photographs in particular, introduced Ty to a world he had never seen in, this, in the small town of Smithfield, North Carolina. The encyclopedia became an escape for me, he explains, adding that the World Book set me off as a dreamer who would one day get out of small town America and take my own photos that I could share with the world. In college, Ty originally studied architecture and took photography as an elective. Learning about his me and appreciation for great architecture and seeing the little details that no one seemed to notice. What I learned in design classes gave me the tools I needed to understand composition. However, it wasn't until he began using Aperture in Photoshop that he felt he could finally produce the images the way he imagined them. This led to his YouTube channel, where he has posted a series of short videos called Two Minute Architecture, in which each show features a classic building whose history is revealed in a series of vintage photographs leading up to a montage of Ty's contemporary shots. Folks, it is an absolute pleasure to bring on Ty Chi. Hey, Ty. Hey, Stefan. How you doing? I'm doing just fine, man. It's, um, you know, just a pleasure to have you here. And I'm so glad that we met through the uh, Jersey City Photographers Meetup. I got that straight this time. <laughs> <laughs> and we were introduced. Good evening to everybody, by the way. Let's give shout outs here uh, to Julia Weeks from the AP Images is here. All right. Big fan of yours. Tiffan Falke is here um, and a lot of others. Uh, Edward, a previous guest is here. Hello, Edward. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, Rodnian is here. Good evening from Long Island. Um, Anita, Sonia, hello, Anita. Wonderful to have you here. Okay, lots of shout outs. So, you know, Ty, we met through a friend of mine uh, whose uh, name is Barry Richards, uh, and he directed me to the Jersey City Photographers Meetup. And like many groups, uh, you know, I was captivated by the talent in the group. 
and your photography caught me uh, right away. And so it's a pleasure to have you here. Why don't you tell everybody about yourself, uh, how you how you got started in photography? And, um, you know, first of all, how are you doing? How is how have you been holding up through the pandemic? Um, actually, pretty well. I've adapted pretty good to, to working at home. Um, you know, it's you know, it's a little different not going to the city every day, but you know, I've adapted to it pretty good and I'm, I'm settled in with it and, and doing well. Yeah. Um, my photography journey started like when I was a, a kid, actually. Um, I think my mom won a little, actually, I still have it, believe it or not, a little 110 pocket camera. Wow. And, um, no, hold that up again, man. We don't, <laughs> don't take that off that fast. Wow. From, like, the 70s. And yeah, man. I still, I still have a, 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 well, a dead flash cube and the flash tower that was supposed to get rid of the red eye and everything. Keeping it wow. directly in your it's face. So but great I still that you that. kept that. Look at that, man. <laughs> All right. Bravo for vintage stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. But so I, I talked it out of her. You know, she said she was about, you know, and so immediately I started taking pictures with that. And, um, you know, but and then in college, I took photography as an elective. and I developed uh, my own film in the dark room and everything. That was a really fun experience. But things really took off for me when the digital age cut came. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I felt for the first time that I totally had control of my own photography. Um, before you take pictures, you send them to a lab and you pray you got something that was close to what you saw at the time. So when digital stuff came out, it really wasn't that great. And I still have my very first digital camera, which is a, a little Casio. And this thing ran off of um, four AA batteries that would be dead in about after you took about 20 shots. And the pictures were like postage size um pictures it wasn't even one it wasn't even one megapixel but it was just amazing that you could take a picture and immediately do something with it and upload it to you know the early version of the web back then yeah yeah but then um you know i got more and more better cameras finally my first dslr was a, a dslr was a, a nikon d50 and you know i, I started i think apple had um, a program called aperture which was kind of like lightroom and I got that over Lightroom because it was supposedly worked better with Apple computers, which is what mm -hmm. I had. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, it was just, I don't know, I, my, I just advanced so much quickly because it was like you got instant gratification. Whatever you did, you saw your results right then. And I was just totally hooked. And that's it. And I'm still hooked. So tell us. Still doing so stuff every day. Richard Riles is here. My main man, Ty, he says. All right. Hey, Richard. All right. Hey, all right. Richard's here. Uh, Julia Weeks, once again. What do you shoot with now, Julia asks. And Julia is a photo editor at the AP Images uh, Archive. So uh, pleasure to have her here and a colleague of mine and dear friend. So, Hi, Julia. Um, right now, I shoot with a bunch of different cameras. Um, I have a Nikon um, D800, which is, if I'm doing something that that's, that I, this kind of a project for me, or, or I want to do something really serious with, I, I use that camera. But I've fallen in love now with the Sony cameras and the, the whole mirrorless thing. It just ah. it just works really good. I like the electronic viewfinder and and being able to know what you're getting as you're shooting and doing less chimping mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um and the size of it. And but one of the things I really fell in love with it was being able to adapt. Um, almost any lens to it and I kind of yeah. fell in love with vintage yeah. lenses and yeah. I, it's, it's just I just love the feel of them I mean I have a bunch of them but I love the mechanical feel of right. these things it's just right. nothing like you know the plastic you feel of everything now and right. when you turn a dial you feel clicks there's a tactile feedback that just yeah. it's it's just a different experience it kind of brings back that feeling of how it used to be but, but I'll never forget now. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I can totally really I can't I'll never forget the time my friend Ronaldo Robinson, who was on this show, a uh, great photographer, um, who put the first camera in my hands. I'll always tell that story because I'm indebted to him <laughs> to this day. Um, you know, I had a Nikon EM that he gave me with a motor drive. And man, oh, yeah. once I had that motor drive in my hands, I was in heaven. I mean, it was so fun to work with and so cool. You know, there, I love my Samsung NX1 that I have now with an 18 to 50 2.8 lens. And mm -hmm. my smartphone, of course, does great work. But there's there's just something about uh, going back to the manual days, right? Oh, yeah. 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 It, it's, it's nostalgia. And it just, 
you know, it just feels good. <laughs> yeah, it makes, yeah. It, to me, it just makes it feel like I'm doing something more. It just yeah. it, it gets you more involved in your photography. Absolutely, absolutely. While we're at it, I want to remind everybody to please share this broadcast with everybody. So if you go to your phone right now, please, and uh, hit not only hit like, we love your likes, but we really love your shares. Share the broadcast with your friends, family, and network so they get to know all about Tai Chi's work. And, um, you know, I have to tell you uh, the other thing I want to get right into, because we saw all those beautiful uh, cityscapes and architectural photographs that you dibble and dabble in and and all the post-production work, too, that you do with certain things. What is it? Uh, what what started you off your passion? We talked about it in your bio, but tell us more about your passion for architecture and design and and cityscapes. Well, and I'm going like to pull said, up. I'm going to pull up the sh- uh, slideshow while we're while we're doing this right now. Yeah, like you said in the introduction, um, I grew up in a, in a little tiny town in North Carolina. wasn't much to do there. My grandma pulls up in the driveway one day with a brand new set of, of um, World Book encyclopedias, and I literally went through those things volume by volume, page by page, and I was mm-hmm. just amazed at what there was out there in the world, and. Um, you know, as a kid, we went on trips. We had relatives in New York, so I'd been to New York City before and in and, and D.C., and it was just those images just stuck in my head, and I wanted to – I said, one day I'm going to be able to just roam around there and, and take pictures because it was just so fascinating. And I remember, like, we would you know, take a car trip up there and be on the turnpike, and I was just amazed at how many miles away you could see the World Trade Center, you know, and – you know, but for for me, it's just it's it's just an amazing place, New York City. It's like a it's like a giant playground. And th- as far as design goes, when I got out of high school, I, I had mm-hmm. taken drafting in high school, and so I didn't know really what I wanted to do. So my parents kind of pushed me toward architecture. Mm-hmm. So I took um, architecture and city planning at Howard University for a couple of years, and ah. what I really wanted to do. I love the the history and I love all the stuff I learned in design classes and everything, but I kind of gravitated more toward technology and, you know, I ended up now I'm a, I'm an IT manager. So, yeah, it, mm-hmm. you know, but now it just fits so well um, for me, technology and art just kind of mesh together now. And well, your whole background speaks volumes, Ty. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous because I I love your background. I feel like I'm you're inside of the uh, Star Trek Enterprise or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit of a gadget freak. No, I, I love it. I love it. Um, I I really am. A, I I love when I can. I have just somebody like you on. Boom! The lighting is just. I didn't have to tell you anything. Every I don't have to tell most photographers about lighting, but there's something about your background that just really does it for me. First of all, I'm a big fan of the color blue, uh, but. Uh, the way you have it set up, like I said, all you need is some special, mo- uh, you know, mood music and you're set, man. <laughs> well, I spend a lot of time in this room and um, <laughs> I try to fill it with things that make me happy and, 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 you know, um, yeah. boost creativity, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, no, listen. My happy place. That's good. We all need our happy places. The Lord <laughs> knows about it. Me, it's my sunroom. You, it's your digital studio. <laughs> 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 so, um, but it's, um, you know, so we have the design, we have the architecture, we have the passion for the city. Of course, you and I have been talking about that for the past couple of hours as we were working on uh, getting the show together. Uh, you know, it's it's always wonderful to be sit behind the scenes with somebody like yourself for a good hour, hour and a half and talk a lot more. And I, I'm going to do that more. It's actually a great way into the sh- segue into the show because it puts everybody at a real nice pace that way. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we've already been engaging in so much great conversation. But what I wanted to talk to you about, so you take all of that and then you bring in the Photoshop work, though, and you bring in the post-production work with something like we're showing on screen right now. And I love the way you, um, (laughs) she's saying Star (laughs) Wars or Star Trek. Okay, I just dated dated myself a little, but Star Trek's been redone, so Star Trek. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, But. Let's look at this beauty here. I mean, I love I love the way you, you know, work with Photoshop and post-production work because, you know, like you said, and we read in the bio in the intro, um, you know, it's a matter of being totally creative. And but you do such a wonderful job with it. So tell us about it. 
Um, this this image here, I was walking on the High Line, and I think this is either 23rd Street or 26th Street. Mm-hmm. And the sun was setting, and what immediately caught my eye was was the, the color of the sunlight on the street and the long shadows of the, the figure just standing there. That just grabbed me. So I took the picture, and I have a thing for symmetry. So when I got it home, I mean, it was a pretty cool picture just with him in the street. So I just started playing with it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just like the V shape. I like the symmetry. And, you know, I'm a I'm a big symmetry freak. I'm one of those people who, you know, if I walk in that, like when I put pictures on my walls, I mean, <laughs> I measure everything down to the last <laughs> millimeter. And I can tell if there's something off just a couple of degrees and everything. So, oh, wait, Richard, know. Richard was just giving you a tremendous compliment there. And it's one that we should read. Ty is also a kind, which we know, and we so appreciate knowledgeable and giving mentor and teacher. Wow. That's, that's, that's quite the compliment. And, uh, and I'll second that. Um, I don't know you as a mentor and a teacher, but I definitely <laughs> already know you as being incredibly kind and talented. Oh, thank you. I try to help people whenever I can. And I love to share knowledge and, you know, you can learn things from, from everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yes, you can. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I like, was just I was just telling my students at FIT that today I teach a class at FIT in the fundamentals of social media to mm-hmm. a group of 20 photography students. And I was telling them today, you can take uh, uh, some nuggets from everywhere and put them all together in your world and make everything a better thing. You know? Yeah. So Edward says here, uh, I love how one uh, um, I love how one filed of interest. Um, he might have meant field of interest. I think he meant field. I, I love how one field of interest influenced the other. Ty, in your case, the study of architecture and your future in photography. In my case, it was political science and photography. One had a huge impact on the other. Subject choice, emotional and intellectual impact. Our footprint on the world, amazing and a great inspiration. Edward, Edward, I yeah. never know how Edward, who's a great photographer himself, I have, we had on this show, can write those ca- those comments in such a short amount of time. He types <laughs> fast. <laughs> Amazing man. Amazing. Oh, yeah. So knowledgeable. Anyway, what a what a beautiful statement. So Ty, uh, go on. I'm sorry. Tell us about the rest. About um, symmetry, about your use of uh, Photoshop and designing something like this. Because I love this. It's so mysterious and beautiful. Yeah, I use a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself a photo Photoshop expert by mm-hmm. any means, um, but I Fine. am a true student of YouTube University. And when I want to know how to do something, I just look it up. And there's usually more than, you know, there's several choices of videos that yep. you should learn how to do something. Yes, there is. And I experiment a lot and I'll use a variety of tools like some images you see. I actually touch them with like three or four programs sometimes to get the result that I want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'll just sit there and play around with it. Um, but this one, like I said, symmetry is a big, is a really big thing for me. And sometimes I see it immediately and other times I don't, I just have to, to just play around with it and I'll chop something in two and flip it over and see how it looks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like um, adding a lot of contrast Oh, mm-hmm. this one, this one. This, I love, this. I love this man. When I saw this, I've seen, I've seen a lot of takes on on the skyline, uh, classic to modern to just all out, just drop dead gorgeous. But when I saw this, it really, really was art, so artsy and so different. I pulled it right away and made sure we had to have it in the uh, in the slideshow here to talk about. Tell us about how you do something like that. I, I love it. All right. Th- this technique is called intentional camera movement. Okay. And this picture came about, um, I met a photographer from the West Coast named, named Roxanne Overton, mm. and she specializes in this. If you, if you look at her um, Instagram page, this is all she does. I will. And I went on a photo walk with her, and yeah. um, I spent a few hours with her, and she was teaching me this technique. And it's really quite tricky. I had to do a lot. You, you slow your shutter speed down. And at the end of the exposure, you just kind of flick the camera, but you have to make sure you flick it completely straight so you don't blur it too much. You just want to exaggerate the the line, in this case, the vertical lines. Mm-hmm. And this took several tries to do, and I got them a very various results. And 
you know, it was kind of hard for me to choose which one, but I, I like this one because um, the colors that were there and I just kind of, um, you know, just pumped up the colors, um, tried to pump up the, the, the reflections in the water and the texture in the water. And I just liked how the, how it just grabbed the pinpoints of light and just it's, dragged them down. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I really, really like it. It It's mysterious. It's, it's cool. It's uh, it, it's had such a beautiful feel to it. Like I said, I've seen so many. The, the skyline of New York City. By the way, you just got a tremendous compliment from one of the great photographers of our time, uh, Rick Friedman, uh, who is also a previous guest uh, from Boston. Rick is a master of lighting and uh, has documented presidents from, you know, for years and the campaign trail and many other things. And he is always fooling around with something. Uh, <laughs> so he, he gave you a great compliment. Hello from Boston. Awesome work from Rick. Edward Thanks. also said rising like a Phoenix. I like that. Edward's Edward's uh, amazing with his uh, commentary. So uh, I, I don't pay him, uh, by the way, <laughs> 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 but uh, it's, um, you know, so let me uh, put up the next one. Um, you know, I've been, you were speaking about um, watching and learning from other photographers um, and taking walks with uh, other photographers. I've just been watching, uh, I've been fortunate enough to watch a couple of um, master classes this uh, past week. But this week, I'm going to watch the ones on photography. I actually watched one on with Robin Roberts uh, because I love to get better and better at interviewing people. And I think the only way you can do that is by watching the masters of doing that. And I think Robin Roberts is one of the great storytellers because she's so genuine, you know, but anyway, mm -hmm. yet to the other stuff that you do. Uh, I know you also like black and white and yeah. this is so futuristic and. <laughs> well, well, this and one so did, did this. This one is a, it's a building on the High Line, and I, I'm not going to butcher this woman's name. I think her name is Z uh, Zahad Hadid <laughs> or something close to that. I, okay. I, I meant to write it down because I knew this was going to come up, but I didn't write it down. It's okay. But, uh, I, I probably I, I've butchered it a few times myself. I'm sure <laughs> she'll I'm I'm sure she'll she'll be okay with it. <laughs> but it's a really cool building, and what caught my eye dead center was the were the two people standing there. Right. And so I took the picture purely for that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a bad image unaltered, but I just felt it needed something, you know? Sure, so sure. Well, I, that's what I love about you, man. You take things and you add to it and there's nothing, you know, it, that's great. That's pure creativity there. Everybody has their thing and you have found yours and it's a wonderful thing. And so I, I like another thing, I like repeats. Symmetry, mm -hmm. repeats, mm -hmm. leading lines. And this just led itself to a bunch of repeats. Yeah, no, definitely. No doubt about it. Um, let's let's see what else. I know we have uh, so many goodies here. I want to make okay. <laughs> now I have to tell you, when I was going through your your uh your photo archive and I was curating all the photos for this show, which I do for every show, the beginning slideshow and this, this really Two things. I attracted me immensely and creeped me the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> what is this and where is this? I wish I had been there to photograph it myself. It is so ultra wild. <laughs> this is in a museum in Beacon, New York. I think it's the museum okay. is called um, Dia Beacon. Wow. And the name of the sculpture is called Crouching Spider. And when I saw this and the way they had it lit and everything... It reminded me of the monster movies I used to watch as a child. That was oh. in, and I used to I used to subscribe to the three magazines when I was a, a kid. One was Boy's Life, one was Famous Monsters of Filmland, and the other one was Starlog. And this just reminded me of the classic nineteen fifties monster movies. Oh, so I was trying to take it at an angle where it's already menacing, but right. you know I tried to kind of go a little lower. Right. And the, the way the light was in, inside that um, gallery just just added to the creepiness and to the, the, the menacing look of the spider, I thought. Well, the lighting in the gallery is a given. That's a that's a definite plus um, mm -hmm. always. But the angle that you took it at is what works really great because 
you know, I, I'm always instructing young photographers and telling other amateurs out there and stuff to um, to always use angles, you know, because angles bring so much to everything. And I always tell people, rule number one, stop shooting dead on. <laughs> yeah. Stop shooting dead on. <laughs> and that's exactly what you have here is a beautiful angle, a little, uh, you know, uh, off center there, and and the lighting is just magnificent. I tell you, if it was dark and I walked pa- into this building, I didn't know it was a sculpture garden or whatever. I'd be running out the door. <laughs> well, it, it's it's really striking when you see it. You kind of come around a corner, and 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 there it is. It's yeah, it's it is. I have to make it up there. I'm I'm going to mark this one down. Uh, the the gallery there. Barry's here. Barry Richards. So great to so great to see artists supporting artists. Absolutely, Barry. Um, and thanks to you, I got to know Ty through the uh, Jersey City uh, photography meetup. So th- I used to live in Jersey City. I lived there for 10 years uh, right at Newport. So um, I know it well. I know it well. So now get to one of my favorite shots that I found of yours. And I have to tell you, I love this because, you know, it, it's it's it has everything. It has everything. Um, and the 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 woman standing there with the dog, the the neon lighting from that vintage Pepsi sign. Uh, talk about this one for a, a minute or two. Um, the the woman in the in the in the picture that's actually a friend of mine, and that's okay. her dog, and the, the dog works. is like, like her child. And I had gone over to Long Island City. I hadn't been there for a long time, and. Um, I was going to take pictures that night, but it's, it was raining. So I didn't really get to do any as, as much, you know, I was going to do some long exposures on a tripod right. of the skyline. And so um, it stopped raining and I kind of turned around and I just saw all the reflections and the glossiness of the, of the wet boardwalk over there. Mm-hmm. And I took that with a, a, a little point and shoot Panasonic um, hmm. camera and you know, so when I got at home, um, I pretty much just boosted up everything. Um, I'm, uh, um, boosted the highlights and the texture and the reflections. Um, I tried to make the neon pop a little bit. And and then the uh, I think that's the Queens World Bridge in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I made sure I boosted the, the, the little, you know, fairy light from the bridge yeah. a little. And again, I like the leading lines. In this case, they're they're going the other way. They're converging. Right. Um, right. And well, I I have to was, tell you, like, you know, yeah, I did it was like a wide. This is, I did that sixteen by nine in camera too. Yeah, well, Edward uh, is uh, another huge compliment here. That is absolutely gorgeous, pure electricity, color, humanity, and Americana genius, iconic. Oh, oh, there you so go. Much. There you go. Um, And I have to tell you, you know, it's one of the, some of these places are the hidden gems, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You have Long Island City, which I need to explore more of. Um, And I also, I live in New Jersey now, uh, born and bred Greenwich Village. I'll always say that till the day I die. (laughs) But the bottom line is I now explore places like Patterson, New Jersey, for instance. And I have to tell you, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait till the pandemic subsides and we get this under control because I started exploring Patterson before the pandemic hit. And mm-hmm. I started taking pictures of some of the vin- old classic factory doors and other places yeah. there. Oh, my God, I can't wait to go back. I may have to go back sooner and just mask up a lot and be very careful. But it is just so great. So it's Long Island City, too. Classic built. You won't find that Pepsi sign anywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yep, that's an icon over there. Yep, they yeah. they totally changed the area. They built all new stuff, but they kept the sign and they just built around it. It's yeah. kind of like our Colgate clock, right? That's right, the Colgate clock. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. One, yeah, no, I love finding those vintage. But this is really a beauty. It really is. It really yeah. is. Now, you know, we're going to move on here to another beauty um, of uh, downtown uh, by the World Trade Center. And um, and the Oculus and everything else. Now, this a lot of great post production work here, but it's what you do with the post production work that counts. And you just turn this into a work of art. I absolutely love the area for the design that they've done with it. The buildings around it. I'm telling you, the, the place is gorgeous down there now. Uh, after all these years of finally getting so much done, this is stunning. How, so, tell us about your work on this. Um. First off, I really love um, Santiago Calatrava's work. His mm-hmm. buildings 
are just they just speak to me. They're 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 always incredible. It's always something that it's the first, you know, and and it it it's the building is supposed to represent a bird in flight. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I like to think it's kind of a shame that it's there and not kind of out in the open because it's more like a cage bird in the city. Right. But I love the way it looks. There's so many there's so many different ways you can take a picture of this building. But what oh. caught my eye that night was um you know the the waterfall and on, on the reflecting pools and um it was you know i saw that there was like a tinge of yellow there and mm-hmm. i'm thinking in my head when i usually like sometimes when i walk around taking pictures i'm always thinking i'll see a scene and i will say to myself mm, yeah i know what i'm gonna do with that when i get home right and i, I look for light i look for color it can be the most subtle of colors in real life but when I took this one, I went home and I, you know, boosted the yellows and I probably used a gradient at the bottom and just added highlights and um, and contrast and clarity just to boost right. the, the water droplets falling down and everything. And um, I tried but the to yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I was going to say the yellow uh, of the water, the golden color matched with the beautiful golden stripe coming down the o- center of the oculus. Um, I'm I'm absolutely fascinated by the Oculus. Every time I'm there, I find a new angle or I find a new way of capturing something. And we're going to show some of the others that you've done. Um, it really is a place that if I lived there, I would never get any other work done. <laughs> well, I worked with, you know, well, before COVID, I worked in the city. That's the way I got into the city, get the, the path station there. And I, I can't tell you how many probably hundreds of pictures I have of this building from yeah. every can angle <laughs> yeah no i know you have history um down there and everything but your pho- photography and everything is just you know phenomenal and you know i'm sure a lot of your it knowledge as an it expert and manager comes into play with so much of what you do technically because you know you're so technically inclined and uh you know um uh, it all plays together so it, it shows it shows um and here's another wonderful picture of the of the pools there the memorial pools mm-hmm. um as we call them and uh you know every time i'm there i just have to always just sit there for a while before i even take some pictures and sometimes i just sit there and just reflect because you know that's what they are they're reflecting pools right but they're they really are something i have to tell you i'm i'm really impressed with what they did downtown after all the years of combativeness and and politics and you name it they really came through and they've designed a really really beautiful area oh yeah yeah they did they did really it's it's you know it's so different than what it was and yeah. you know it's it's kind of uplifting just to walk around there now it is isn't it phenomenal i mean i grew up in the city you know born and bred new yorker and i used to go down to the world trade center and play down there and play along the west side highway when you didn't even want to walk down the west side highway <laughs> you didn't want to be near it you know but right, we made do right. we were city kids we were tough and scrappy and everything but and that lent itself to us uh, succeeding in life i think but the thing is that um they've really it's a marvel it's a marvel and i'm so glad that they're it's getting there more and more and more and almost there cuz god i, I what not you love the day where you, you don't have to hear any slamming anymore or any construction yeah. anymore right right you i know, know. Well, when will that ever happen in New York? I don't know if it'll ever Never. happen. <laughs> so anyway, um, but so that's another one. Um, and then there's just shots where they move some things around the city these days. Now you were telling me this, and I didn't even realize this, but they've moved this around. Where is this? And uh, and it's beautiful. And tell us a little about it. I love this shot. Um, in in this shot, I think this was around 2016, maybe. Um, this this. This structure now is in Domino Park by the mm-hmm. Williamsburg Bridge, mm-hmm. and um, but I just like the way you know it, it looked like a I don't know like I loved all the stained glass and and the way it kind of glowed and yeah. so that's just a long exposure I did there and I just like the way it looked and yeah no it's it's really uh, I I was talking to you earlier about this you know normally I would uh, say that. The photographer in the foreground uh, personally would have, I, I would have, I would have, you know, just like, uh, can he just move, you know? <laughs> but then, but then I looked, but then I looked at it more and more and more, and that really adds to it. It's, it's, it just gives it that 
moody feel that it needs with that one shadow, uh, I mean, silhouette, you know, of him in the dark there in the background and uh, the bridge with those beautiful clouds, <clears throat> excuse me, on a crystal clear night. Um, and that, that, you know, that structure is just so um, gorgeous, the colors of the stained glass. So good, good catch, good catch. And, you know, some some time delayed exposures, long exposures uh, on bridges and stuff. Always always classic to take. Um, there's nothing more beautiful than than the skyline in the background, whether it's Brooklyn, Manhattan. Uh, of course, most of the people turn to the Manhattan way, but Brooklyn has its fair, fair <laughs> share of beauty too. Uh, that's for sure. Never knock Brooklyn. I love Brooklyn. Um, but this shot, I had to get to this next. <laughs> Oh man, I, I you know it's just one of those pictures that just gets me all giddy. I don't know why. I, I just I look at the trains and I look at the angle you took it at, and I was looking at it at this angle and that angle, and then the way it just sweeps in and goes so deep, the depth of field on it and everything. I, I love this. I wouldn't put many photos of train cars on my on my <laughs> on my wall. I would put right. this on my wall. <laughs> oh, thank you. Maybe I'll send you a print. No, no, I'm not. I'm not pinching you for a print, man. <laughs> I mean, it might have sounded like that, but I wasn't. I just, I just loved this. I kept looking. You know what it was? I grew up with a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine in Chelsea, Charlie Kraft. Uh, I doubt he's listening. I don't think he's watched one of my shows. I keep getting on him. I'm like, what kind of friend are you, man? You haven't watched one of my shows. But he used to work for Transit for years. He's one of my. He was my best man at my wedding years ago. He's still my best friend to this day, heart and soul. He worked in the MTA for years, and I was around a lot of trains with him and stuff. And I have to tell you, I guess that's what it is, but the angle is just beautiful. So Edward says, amazing places you have never been before. But with these images, it's like you were there for the first time again, all because of looking and presenting in new ways. Absolutely. 100 percent. Well said. Well said. Even a train yard. Um, <laughs> Tali Douglas. Hello, Tali. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure to have you. Selfless person, amazing artist, very knowledgeable, great student, awesome teacher. Wow, man. Uh, just one accolade after the other. I love it. And uh, and a true testament to your uh, to your uh, com community and and photography family. Um, so now you, we were talking about this earlier. I'm just going to let you roll with this one because I know you, it really irked you. So go, go with the flow. I know. So hold your hand, hold your head, and then tell us the story. <laughs> this image just makes me sad now. Yeah. Because this view is gone. Yeah. And I know that, you know, progress must happen. New things must be built. But can't we just think a little bit before we place giant skyscrapers somewhere? Um, I took this picture from the um, the Brooklyn Bridge. And I always liked when I walked across the Brooklyn Bridge and seeing the Empire State Building so perfectly framed by the, the tower of the Manhattan Bridge. Okay. And another thing I used to like is, just to watch people and especially tourists as they walked across there. And then someone would always look and they would notice that like, Oh wow, look how that lines up. And they, you know, instantly pop up their cameras, their phones and everything. Mm -hmm. But now um, a few years ago, they put up, I think it's called one Manhattan Plaza mm -hmm. and they put it right in the line of sight. And I have a series of pictures that I took over time mm -hmm. as the building is going up. And the poor Empire State Building is just kind of peeping over the edge there. And then yeah. it's totally gone. You know, yeah. it, it's it's one of those things where some things are just done in the city and just makes you cringe. And then it also, on the other side, it makes you appreciate what's what's still in many areas, thanks to the Landmarks Commissions and many other things. But, you know, there's just sometimes there's just no stopping some of these real estate developments and things like that. And it just breaks your heart because that this view should have been there forever. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. What a totally. shame. On that note, um, let's take just a one second break here. I just want to acknowledge my sponsor for the show, StreamYard, the best platform out there for your live streams. It changed my life as a social media and visual strategist and now live stream producer of my show and other shows. I have to tell you, StreamYard is the platform, so please check them out.
And then I just want to further say that um, at this point that I am a social media and visual consultant, a live stream production specialist and social media coach, and always looking for new uh, new business and a new home at the time. So if anybody, uh, feel free to contact me and it would be wonderful, wonderful to connect. So, but now Ty, let's, let's move on here, man, to, to some of the, man, you can walk around the city for years and years and, uh, you know, I've walked everywhere. And then if you don't live in the city again, sometimes you might miss certain things. (laughs) I I had known about this sculpture. This is such a great picture, man. It's so cool. (laughs) Yeah, this, this is really amazing. This is on Park, Park Avenue. And this statue is, is just so tall. I mean, it's just like, it's kind of in your face when you walk there. And I was so lucky that I had a really wide angle lens with me that day. And, you know, I got this image and I, I got it, um, you know, with him in clear sky, which, which, you know, brought him out as opposed to getting lost in the buildings and everything. And it's, it's kind of a happy image for me. It was like, well, this is very whimsical. Um, you know, just something that was just really cool and kind of unexpected as he came around the corner. Mm-hmm. And I think that this statue is back in the city somewhere now because I've actually seen it someplace. Really? A version of it on popping up on Instagram quite a bit. Oh, well, I'm yeah. going to have, I'm going to have to find out because I, yeah. I, I need, I need one for my own just personal. <laughs> I, I have to go play with it a little because it's so, it's so cool. Do you know what, uh, what the, um, you know, what, who the artist is and what, what, uh, was the, uh, the thought process behind this statue? No, the, I'm sorry. The I don't know. No, oh, no, no, it's but, fine. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. You know, we we photographers sometimes will will take certain pictures and we'll actually blank out some of the rest that way because <laughs> we're so I focused. Try, I always try to find out the story behind stuff, <laughs> and I probably knew at the time, but this has been a few years, and you know, I kind of totally forgot. But you yeah. know, I like to know the story behind everything too. That's another thing I do with you know with photography. If I see something that catches my eye, I usually want to know why it's there or or how it was built or some history about it or something. But right, right. Well, I want to tell everybody while we're at it, um, because it's always good to give reminders throughout the show, to please share this broadcast with your friends and family and networks so everybody can learn about Ty and, and our Spin It Social Hour, which is every other Thursday now at 9 p.m. And I have to tell you, We've got quite the lineup coming up over the next uh, couple of months. Already booked some phenomenal photographers, uh, and uh, Ty is just one of them. And uh, I have to also say um, that we are broadcasting live to Facebook on my Spin It Social brand page. We also have it going to Twitter. We have a broadcast going to YouTube and LinkedIn Live. So we are covering all the bases here. So there's never a place where you can't find the spin at social hour and all of these great photographers. So Edward says, it's like the, it's, it's like the human figure. It's, I'm sorry. It's like the human like figure just landed there from above and is saying, what should I do? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it has a sci-fi feel to it, you know? Yeah. Um, I would, I'm going to have to research this one because I would like to know the, uh, the story behind it, um, and everything. So, um, let us move on here. Now, you know you caught my eye with these because I'm known as Mr. Just Look Up. But I, I think I have some competition here now. <laughs> but I have to tell you, you nailed this. And uh, and we were talking about this because it, uh, tell us about why you took this and the special part of this for you. Um, I've, I've taken the, the um, One World Trade Center, looking up at it from different angles, whatever. But what caught me on this one was it was a good contrast between old and new. Um, you've got the modern glass tower of One World Trade Center, and you've got um, the classic brick architecture from like the 1930s. That's a, I think it's an, a, it was the AT&T switching station. That That's right. That's right. And they're currently being converted to condos. I don't believe the same building. But I just thought it was a really nice <laughs> contrast. And, you know, the... um the World Trade Center is so reflective; it was picking up the the, the clouds and the and the glass, and you know, I just thought it was a good comparison between how old and new are coexisting in the city. 
Okay. Hey, I want to remind everybody, if you ever tune into the Spin It Social Hour or any live streams with StreamYard, please go to StreamYard.com and give them permission access. So therefore, your thumbnails, uh, your profile photos will also show up with your uh, um, comments. Uh, but uh, actually, Bob's did show up. So great. Bob Veritoni is a great friend and great photographer. I'm going to get you on the show one day, Bob. I'm telling you, man. Uh, he, uh, gave us the, uh, URL, which I'll, sh- he has now in the comments for everybody to check it out. This massive sculpture is now standing. Oh, in Rockefeller center. Yeah, Thank I'm you, Bob. Where I've seen pictures. Yeah. Okay. But That's that must have been, it, it, but wait, it, there now. but wait, it must've been after the holidays because I was there during the holidays photographing all the Christmas stuff. Huh? Interesting. Or maybe I just, I was so focused on the Christmas stuff. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> You were probably I was, standing underneath it as you're taking pictures of the You of know, the I probably didn't look up that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man? I amaze myself sometimes. But thank you, Bob. It's an old Verizon building, Bob says, actually. A Verizon, building. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah, you know how I know it's Verizon, Bob? My friend Venice worked there. That's right. It is an old Verizon building. She was actually down there during 9-11, I remember. Um, that building was a fortress for a lot of people that day, thank God. Um, they don't build buildings like that anymore, man. No. <laughs> No. Mm-hmm. Barry yeah. says, Barry Richards says, um, oh, sorry, I didn't uh, see the comment there. Uh, I'm reading it from the side here. Barry says, great example of perspectives in architecture. Um, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Uh, no doubt about it. So I saw this, Ty, and I looked at it several times and first of all it's the geometry of the photograph of course that caught me the lines the ovals the beautiful uh background there which is of course the world trade number one world trade center um it is right yeah of course it is is. yeah yeah only one building has that groove in the middle there like that Mm -hmm. and um but you know it wouldn't be the same without the darn new york city pigeons on it wouldn't it (laughs) (laughs) it's true it, the that's, that's kind of what grabbed my attention on, on this one. I was, you know, walking across the Brooklyn Bridge as I, I do quite a bit. Like sometimes I'm in the city and I just have to walk across the bridge. I don't know. I've, I've yeah. done that many times. Oh man, yeah, what and, a walk it is. And I saw the birds, and you know, I saw the you know the cables going across, and it just seemed to just kind of fit together. And right. it was a gray day, no no clouds. This is one yeah. of the- a lot of days i just desaturated look, everything yeah well look how how well it worked out i mean it's beautiful the grays and the and the darker tones with the with the new york city pigeons themselves <laughs> you know and uh you know it just and the cable the one cable coming down from the bridge uh i i love love walking the bridge and everything um Oh, thank you. I'm, you know, I have to stop reading the comments on the side. <laughs> I, I've gotten in the habit of looking off at the comments because I love that so many people are participating tonight and we have so many great viewers, um, you know, and sharing this broadcast. Richard, I was just saying he loves this interview. Thank you very much, Richard. I appreciate that. Um, very appreciate your your joining the Spin It Social Hour and hopefully we'll see you again uh, for each broadcast. So um, then we have classic classic one world trade center shots here uh you know you can just you can't go wrong on any day with the world trade center but especially as you and i were talking about about cloudy days right yes yes yeah i mean it just plays so you get the beautiful reflections into the glass buildings uh and then you get the contrast between the clouds and the spire and everything else just lends itself to a art, which is what all these photos are now but then we get to more post-production work that you do. And tell us about this one, because this makes me think Gotham, and it makes me think noir, and it thinks, makes me think everything about that genre of photography and film. I love this. And, and that's exactly where my head was at when I, okay. when I did this one. And um, I, one of the, the, the movies that kind of influenced me, and I always have a, a, a connection like with that movie in, in New York, is... Uh, 19, I think it's 1926 film called Metropolis by Fritz okay. Lang. Mm-hmm. And his, he was inspired by the New York City skyline when he made that movie. He came mm-hmm. to New York, he looked around, and he he just made kind of megatropolis out of out of what his vision of New York City was. Mm-hmm. And in this image, I just wanted to, to give it impact by, um, you know, just boosting contrast. Um, boosting the vertical lines right 
And then I played with the clouds. I used kind of like it was like a Venetian blind kind of overlay. And I put that behind there and I just thought it was a good balance of, of vertical and horizontal and, and, and contrast. And no, you know, I, I quite a bit. I did a lot of different things with it. But when I, when I got close to this, I was like, yeah, this is it. I like a lot. I really like it a lot. And, well, what I like most about it too is I, I love the background, the the what you did, uh, the way you tone the sky and uh, the you know the light in the background. It really adds to it. You have that subtle shade on the right, uh, but then when you look to the left, you have those two bright spots. So it's sort of you drift naturally from one end to the other, but it, it the 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 beauty of those buildings, the way they're built, um, the structure of them and, and all the lighting within the building buildings themselves, it all just comes together really, really nice. So Rodnian says metropolis, one of the best science fiction movies ever. Yeah. When my father was taking a, a sociology of work class at borough Manhattan BMCC, uh, in the seventies, he took me to a screening of Metropolis. Yeah, I remember that movie, man. It was a good one. It was a good yes. one. So a lot of, a lot of Metropolis fans here. Thank you, Rodney. Wonderful to have him here. A very, very dear, uh, friend and viewer of many shows. Appreciate your support, man. Um, and then we're, we're talking Oculus again here. You can't go <laughs> wrong with every angle, man. Look at this. I mean, you know, you could just look at it and just, just dream. It's a dreamy photo. Well, this came about, um, I have a friend named Sui O who's a Hasselblad master, I think this. Okay. Ambassadors. Okay. And um, she invited me on a photo walk that um, Hasselblad was doing. Everybody got to play, I think it's called a 1DX, which is a, um, a medium format um, a digital camera. And it was 50 megapixel. And this camera has the most amazing, like, dynamic range. I mean, you can underexposed like crazy to protect your highlights. But when you get back in the Lightroom and bring out the shadows, it's just magic there. There's no sparkles. There's no noise. It's it's just beautiful. Well, I and, agree with Edward 100%. He said Alfred Stiglitz uh, would, uh, would, would absolutely, you know, just adore this photo. So, And so here I just love the, you know, the way the, the shapes displayed here. And the Hasselblad didn't lose anything, you know. Right. I could have those thin lines um, against that bright, the bright white and not lose mm -hmm. anything there. And you had the subtleties um, of going from white to gray to black. And it's, right. it was just, it was an amazing experience. Oh man. I tell you, well, playing with what was it like we were talking about? Be like a $10,000 toy. <laughs> yeah, back then the body of that camera was like ten grand, and the average about three thousand dollars. So no, Ooh. that's not happening. Yeah. But <laughs> making making the hair making the hair on the back of my head stand yeah. on the back of my neck stand up there ten thousand dollars on a on a new body. Not not right now, but let me tell you, I would love to have one of those in my hands to play with for a while. That is that yeah. is Vincent Laferre, who was a guest on the show, a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, works a lot with the. Um, with the uh, wonderful technology that's been developed by the company called Red. Have you oh, seen yeah. Yes, that, yes. that they use for movies and other oh, things too now and everything? That digital technology is yeah. off the charts. <laughs> yeah. And Vincent, Vincent is a master of using that stuff. So I can only imagine uh, being um, – tell, tell me her name again. I'm very sorry. Her name is Sui O. Right. Okay. So Sui O. Her, her, her architectural oh. photography. It's phenomenal. It's just really good. Oh, we'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in touch with you, Suyo. You can, you can guarantee it. So Ty just hooked us up. We haven't met yet, but you, you will be a future guest on this show <laughs> because uh, if you're playing around with the, with the toys like that, and I'm only joking with the toys, but um, enjoying uh, that high tech, uh, you know, solid equipment and taking beautiful architectural photography like that. My co-producer who we're going to bring on to say hello, because that's his cue. If I'm talking about architecture is the great Jonathan Borstein who's behind the scenes helping me with driving all the banners and tickers and uh, and many other things with the show. Jonathan, introduce yourself and say hello to our crowd tonight. Jonathan, you're on mute. He does this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. And, and then his and then Jonathan's cue is usually it might be better that way. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go ahead, John. Don't give me that way. Uh, my name is Jonathan Borstein. I'm a full-time part-time writer, a part-time tech. And um, just for the record, the architect whose name you were trying to remember is Zaha Hadid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. So, Jonathan, do you have any questions for Ty tonight? You always have a great one for one of our guests. So I will, I will fade. You will fade. Okay. Okay. You're going to leave it to the architecture tonight and the photography. Okay. Well, I wanted to introduce Jonathan tonight, as I always do, because uh, it takes a team to put the show together. And uh, he is my behind the scenes man as I'm driving this show so I can concentrate on the images and the interviews. Thank you, Jonathan. All right. So Rodney on's back and says, good evening, Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> so sorry, that was a little off cue there. But um, now, like we said, many angles, every angle, you could be on your back, you could be upside down, you could be hanging from a rafter, it doesn't matter. There's always something to capture with the Oculus. This is really different. Yeah, and you won't believe what camera I took this with. Um, wait, let me guess. Wait, let me think, think, think. Uh, it's not your phone. I know that. Um, I'm going to say one of your older classic cameras. No, a GoPro. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I used to carry around a GoPro. These days I do, I'm, I'm in love with the Osmo, um, the Osmo action. Oh, okay. And the small to carry around and they're great in the city, especially if you want to catch something really wide. And if you shoot manually, you can actually pull a lot out of them in, in post, you know. Okay. So you just have to be be careful. And um, but yeah, that I was just looking around with that and I was just sitting around wow, with this. Wow, very cool. And what yeah. is the what is the name of that GoPro again? Um, this is, um by DJI and it's called the um Osmo Action. And oh, the reason I liked it so much because it actually had a, a, a screen on the front. So if you're shooting mm -hmm. yourself can see what you're doing and okay. but it, uh, i'll use it for doing time lapses a lot um mm -hmm. you know and if i'm walking around the city in the confined spaces it, it's just great for getting really wide shots that you couldn't normally you know get in and it's nice to keep around in your pocket if um oh, i like it i like it you know, big camera yeah 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 definitely well marge kleinman who's a great photographer uh, another wow, uh, i love that our crowd tunes in marge was a, a great guest uh, of uh stoop story fame in brooklyn everybody look up stoop stories marge is a wonderful community photographer and beyond that has done great stuff uh jayashri says uh, i'm sorry what did she say uh DJ One Osmo Action. Okay, thank you, thank you very DJI. much. Yeah, it's a DJI. Sorry. Um, so, but let's uh, let's move. Uh, Rodnian says the street price for the Osmo Auction. Well, we're getting a lot of information here. It's about US two hundred dollars. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're welcome, Marge. Anytime. Marge is a great. I love Stoop stories. She's done a great thing. Uh, have you ever checked that out, Ty? You got to check it out. No, no I, have to, I will. I'll check it out. Yeah, Stoop sure. stories is great. Um, all about Stoops in Brooklyn and beyond, and uh, she's really turned it into a beautiful project. And New York owes her a debt of gratitude, in my opinion. So, um, you know, I have to explore more of. Is this from the Brooklyn side? Yeah, right. This is no, from it's a Jersey yeah. City. Oh, Jersey, Jersey City. I'm sorry. That's right. How could, no, it would have to be from the Jersey City side. That's right. Yeah. So I've really explored a lot of Jersey City, but I didn't see where, what, what, is this past the Colgate clock? Um, no, it's on the other side. You know where the train station is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk a little beyond that, right, direct, actually directly in front of the train station. There's these very old piers and they're ah. and they very deteriorated. I just ah. love the textures and the, yeah. And the decay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did this very, uh, it was super cold, but I went out before sunrise right. uh, and, and, and got this. And this was no. a Sony with a vintage um, lens on it. Yeah, no, it's gorgeous. Uh, it, it really is. I love I love old piers like that. I grew up in the West. Uh, I grew up in the village, but I also lived in the West Village for many years. And then when I was a kid, I used to run over to the piers on the West Side. And man, were they really horrible back in the days as they were falling apart. But you know what? I wish I had been in the photography back then. I would have had some really great shots. Um, but you know, anyway, that's another, another story, another life, <laughs> but, um, here's, here's the building once again, uh, on the high line. Correct. Um, yes. that, that, uh, is by, um, here I am. I can't, why is it that name can't stick in my head? <laughs> Sahaja did, I think it, something close to that. 
Uh, you know what, Jonathan? Tell us, tell us one more time, and we promise to remember. <laughs> we're gonna bring Jonathan. We're gonna bring Jonathan on every time we have to talk about this building. Zaha Hadid. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Zaha, and uh, we are very apologetic for uh, for bungling the name, your name, and uh, we appreciate your your architecture. I've walked by your design here, your building, many times, and I absolutely love it. So, if you're listening, we apologize for for the name confusion. But, I wonder if it's you know, anymore. This is one of our last buildings, if I remember correct. Well, um, arrows that she has going back and forth. And the angle really emphasizes that. And with that, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan gets a double cameo tonight. Hey, how about that? Okay, you know, we try to make this show very interactive, very fun. I have to tell you, I will never let it get stale. Um, I love the engagement part of StreamYard and being able to do this live stream this way. I think it brings a whole new dimension to being able to present photography and have a great conversation with great photographers such as yourself and creatives. So secure 808. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. Same about NYC. Okay. Ray Schwartz, 520 West 28th Street yeah. by Zaha Hadid. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very much for the exact spelling too. <laughs> and uh, boy, we're, everybody's getting in on this action here uh, with the address, the zip code. We're going to know everything about uh, Zaha Hadid's work by the time we're, and we should. I love the High Line now. It's getting a bit crowded in a few areas, but I have to tell you, mm. I still have a beautiful time every time I go there. A little, you know, you can't stop progress these days. <laughs> you just can't. But uh, let's move on here uh, to some other things, because I want to get to a couple of videos that you have, or one video in particular, and tell mm -hmm. everybody about the wonderful YouTube series that you've uh, you created and that hopefully you'll continue with. But first, let's talk about this for a second, because this is a structure that, you know, I haven't been inside yet, but I've seen a lot of photos, and I have to tell you, there's nothing that you can't do with the structure in terms of imagination, right? Oh, that, that's true. That's true. And this is one of those structures, new structures in the city that people either love it or hate it. <laughs> and I've heard so much hate on this, yeah. but I love it. You know, yeah. I, it's just the, the lines, the, the creativity, the, you know, there's just so much you can capture here. So it's better from the inside. Looking from the outside, yeah, it's a big pine cone. But <laughs> on the inside... Where it's intended, where you're intended to experience it, right, right, is is where the magic is, and I, I really yeah. love photographing. No, well, the the use of a wide angle here and the time of day, of course, always plays into photographing something like this because of the the bronze and gold color there, and uh, people in different points really make it. It wouldn't be the same, actually, in my opinion, if. It was just early in the morning when nobody was there yet. It would have its own special feel, but it's mm -hmm. something about having people on every level that populate it like ants, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's maybe that's true. the wrong way of looking at it, but or <laughs> or that's just my take on it. You know, uh, they do. They look like ants. It's such, yeah. it's such a huge um, futuristic structure um that you know it really is something and i've gotten past the photography controversy so i've dropped that uh, yeah <laughs> you know that I'm the... <laughs> yeah that wasn't something i really appreciated uh but we'll get into that on a rights and royalties show <laughs> <laughs> but uh here's another great just look up photo like you you've probably ruined a lot of jackets and a lot of shirts uh like yeah. i have but man yeah. is it worth it look at the beauty of this that's right this is saint patrick's cathedral and yeah, look again, at the beauty of that roof. I just yeah. loved all that was going on up there. And Abs the absolutely. And again, the symmetry. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just gorgeous and stuff. And like I said, there's only one way to take those and that's on your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but um, so now we get to a segment I wanted to get to here because Ty has worked on something special that we're going to take a look at and then we're going to have him talk about. So here we have the Grand Central Clock, one of my favorite clocks in the city and the whole area there uh, in front of what I used to call the Pan Am building. Yes, I just dated yes. myself a bit. Uh, yeah. I will always call it the Pan Am building, not the MetLife building. <laughs> I'll never work for MetLife now, but <laughs> that's that's life. Oh, I did a double pun there. Okay. <laughs> so, but let's take a look at your video real quick. Here we go. Okay. Two-minute architecture starts right 
now. Every day, an average of 750,000 people pass through Grand Central Terminal in the heart of New York City. And being a transportation hub, beating the clock is just part of the grind. There's this mostly ignored clock in the gray bar passage that displays the correct time only half the year. And of course, there's this famous clock, but that's a story for another day. For this story, we need to take a step outside to see Grand Central's most grandest clock of them all. Tiffany's largest ever 13-foot in diameter stained glass clock face high above 42nd Street. Now, I have to cut it somewhere because we have, you know, we don't have uh, every, every moment to play of the entire video, but I want people to know, and I'm going to let Tai Chi... Uh, Ty, excuse me, tell you about his video series. And then we'll take a look at another portion of the video that we did, uh, that he did of the clock that I absolutely love with his photography and the way he weaves it in. So Ty, tell us about how you created this series and people should know about it. We're going to show it on the bottom there so people can find it on YouTube at Ty Chi and uh, architecture photography. But tell us about it, please. I love it. I love it. Oh, hold on. Uh, you're muted for some reason. Uh, let me figure out why. Um, okay, go ahead. That's very interesting. Hold on a second, Ty. For some reason, I've lost you. Um, give me one second here. That is really, really strange. Um, give me one second. Okay, Ty, can you hear us now? That is very bizarre. Sorry, folks, we're having a bit of an audio problem for a second. Um, I don't quite know what has happened, but we will figure it out in one second here. So let's see if I can video. It's good. And sorry about that. Okay, Ty. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to go into the mic. Give me one second, please, folks. And we will be right with this. Hold on one second. Okay, we're going to solve this problem for one second. Please stay with us uh, because I'd love for you to hear about Ty's wonderful work with this series. Uh, I am going to... Um, take something else off. Cornelius Vander. And let's see. Hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. I am going to have to reset for one second here. Okay, let's see if we can get some audio here. Ty, can you hear us? We're having major audio problems here. Not know what happened. Um, Ty, can you refresh your end, please? Can you refresh in the browser? Just hit enter and refresh your end and you'll pop right back into the studio. Let's give that a try. Please stay with us, folks. We'll be with you in one less than a minute, I guarantee you. Right where the browser is, just, just refresh back into the studio. Okay, Ty, can you hear me now? Yeah, how's that? Great. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> no apologies, folks. Apologies. Nice save. Um, yeah, you have to notice technology. So, <laughs> okay, I figured that That's was- That's why I'm employed because this stuff breaks. <laughs> right. That was the last resort, but I nailed it. Okay. So let's get back to business here. 
Uh, tell us about your architecture series on YouTube while I reload that video. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, the reason I started a series, um, I wanted to, you know, like today people take pictures, you post them on Instagram, they're there, you know, people look at them for 10 seconds, they disappear. And I have so many pictures and I really love architectural history. Right. And there's some, a lot of buildings and things that I'm really passionate about. And so part of it was I wanted to be, find a way to give my photography. Hey guys, it's Ty. Another, another architecture is back. And so I said, well, let me, you know, it, it took me, a, this was really hard for me to do. I mean, I had to learn how to um, do a little bit of video editing. I had to get brave enough to, to be in front of a camera. Um, I, I'm kind of a perfectionist, um, mm -hmm. you know, so it was, it was really hard to do. And, and even after I made the first one, um, you know, hitting that upload button to YouTube for the first time was a little, was a little scary, but um, I just wanted to kind of preserve, um, you know, some of the work that I've done and to put it in a different perspective and to tell some stories about New York that some people may not know. And, and that's how I kind of started it. And um, I think I, the first one I did was in 2018 and it takes a lot of work to do these. I mean, mm -hmm. it's I, I try to do my research really good because I don't want to, you know, put anything out that's not true. Right. So I do a lot of research and I write the scripts and I double check stuff, double check sources. Um, you know, it's a lot of work, but it's a passion. And so every now and then when the mood hits me, I'll make another one. But um well, let's bring uh, yeah. let's bring the uh, photos back on, and then uh, I'm going to give everybody the pleasure of actually watching this video since it got butchered a little by the loss of sound uh, after we came back, and I wanted to make sure that the flow of the show continued. So we have this beautiful photograph you took of the clock, and then of course we have this wonderful little thing a mystery I didn't know about Ty <laughs> that there's a little trap door beside uh, inside of the clock that you can actually open up and then look out and up at, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, how I got up there was this, this pure luck. I had a friend who, um, you know, worked for the railroad and he saw some pictures. I had gone on a tour of grand central and he saw I posted some, you know, that was in the catwalks and everything. And he called me up and said, dude, like, you know, do you want to see something really cool? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. So he said, meet me, you know, meet me at Grand Central next Saturday morning at like 10 in the morning. So I said, okay. So I met him there and um, he takes me up in a, like probably the most secure area of this building, of right. the operations center. Right. And um, there's a little door that you would just think was a coat closet or something. But when you open the door and go in, you know, you're in an unfinished part of the building and you have to climb a ladder mm -hmm. to get up there behind the clock. Mm -hmm. And it was a one, it was a, you know, a once in a lifetime experience. And wow. um, I, I thank him to this day for this opportunity because it was, it, it was unique and, you know. Right. Well, let's let's uh, so we see these wonderful photographs that you took. Uh, I love this uh, because, like I said, I never knew about that. And I think it's fascinating. And then there's the inside of the clock with that beautiful, beautiful Tiffany stained glass and everything. Um, and so what I want to do now is, is uh, you know, give you the honor of, of, uh, of showing uh, that video again. So let's let's put it back on the screen here so we can so we can show it. We're going to watch it, actually. This episode, we take a behind-the-scenes look at one of the most famous clocks in the world. But before we get... Let's most get that we're at, which is right all. about here. Tiffany's largest ever, 13-foot in diameter, stained glass clock face, high above 42nd Street. Cornelius Vanderbilt envisioned the terminal to be a gateway to the city. The south-facing facade was designed with three triumphant arches, with two pairs of Corinthian columns on either side of the central window. To top things off, in 1914, 18 months after the terminal opened, a 48-foot-tall sculpture designed by French artist Jules Félix Coutin was installed over the centermost arch of the 42nd Street facade. The 15-ton sculpture titled The Glory of Commerce depicts three Roman gods watching over the people of New York. 
In the center stands Mercury, the god of merchants and travelers. On the left is Hercules, the god of strength and travel. And on the right is Minerva, the goddess of wisdom and commerce. In choosing the three gods for the statue, the artist incorporated all aspects of travel and transportation, coupled with artistic grace and beauty. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to take pictures behind the face of the Big Tiffany clock at Grand Central. It was a unique experience and one that I'll never forget. Gaining access to the famous Tiffany clock is next to impossible since it's not open to the public. Located behind an obscure door in one of the most secure parts of the building is a vertical passageway that requires navigating a series of ladders. Once you've reached the top, the gray walls of the passageway turn to color as the sunlight passes through the stained glass panels of the clock face. The number six at the bottom of the clock is actually a secret door. That is really a beautiful look at that. Uh, I have to tell you, it's it's wonderfully done. And uh, I, I hope everybody will visit your YouTube channel and learn more about it. Yeah, it was it was extreme. The only thing that it was it was so funny, and if you watch the video later, you'll you'll and see what it's truly like up there. It's um, you know, in, and I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie Hugo uh, about this kid who lived in a big giant clock, and you know, I had a, a, a vision that it was going to be all this giant clockwork up there, but um, <laughs> that that part of it, the mechanics were a, a little disappointment, but the stained glass. Um, Clock face was just incredible. Mm -hmm. No, it, it really is. It's beautiful. And I want to get back to the photos here. Um, so I, I love that series that you're doing. So continue on with that, please. It's uh, I think it's fascinating. And you have a great voice on top of it <laughs> to add to it. Um, I love the way you add the little mysterious elements in when you're talking about things. You, you have a future in narrating um, <laughs> mystery novels and stuff uh, on audio books. <laughs> 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 but uh, to go along with your talent in photography. So uh, I love this. Uh, it's like an etching. It's like a drawing and everything. I, I love the way you uh, you uh, worked on this photo after after you took it. It's it's beautiful. This oh, is uh, which, which uh, this is um, um, Grant's, tomb. Grant's tomb, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And then, and then we get to because we're we're coming to the close here. But I wanted to uh, highlight a couple of great to show before and after shots that Ty has done with something like the top of the Flat Iron Building, which is one of my favorite buildings in the world. Uh, but you take a look here, and then you see the work that Ty puts into some of these photographs, and then you add in, boom, and just just beautiful, man, what you did with this. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It started out with just a a, a plain picture, and no pun intended there. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no pun. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, every angle of this building is just really cool, and I like the the pinnacle of it, the triangle. And um, so I was playing around. Like I said, I, I always been messing around with some new program or whatever. And, and Luminar had came out at this point. Right. And, you know, it had the, you know, the wonderful sky replacement tool and you can add, um, you know, starburst, uh, sorry, sunburst. And, you know, you can layer in things like the airplane and everything and you can make change the lighting so everything matches and stuff. So this is one of the first things that I played with and did in, in Luminar. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And Tim Sohn was saying, uh, as I showed, uh, you know, he said he loves that time lapse before and also uh, watching from LinkedIn. Great to know we have viewers here from LinkedIn as well. Tim has a wonderful, wonderful show called The Tim and Jim Show. That's on Wednesdays at 4.30. Definitely check it out. It's one of the great live stream shows on the air. Um, and uh, Tim and Jim are great tech experts. And, um, and he has a lot to contribute to the live stream community. So Richard Lyle says his voice is great, but he has the most maniacal, but he has the most maniacal good guy laugh you can imagine. A maniacal good guy laugh. Now that's that's a real uh 
you know, interesting statement there. Okay, I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> uh, Thanks, um, Richard. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Richard knows uh, that. So then we have this. Now, this is in uh, Montreal, right? Yes, it's the Olympic Park, 1976 right. Summer Olympic Park. Right. Now, take a look at this, folks, and take a look at the amount of work Ty puts in on some of these futuristic images that he loves to play with. This is fantastic. You ready? Boom. Look at that. That is really, really cool. I love the post-processing work on it, and it's something out of a sci-fi movie now. I mean, that is, you know, the original shot, and there's one of Ty's... uh, works of art that he's worked on there uh, in terms of making it pop and just bringing it into a a whole new level. Tell us a little about this. And then we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to start smoothing things out here and say good night to everybody and uh, let everybody know where they can find you. Um, I think this was 2016. I I finally got to go to to Montreal. Um, I remember when I was a teenager and watching the, um, the Olympics on TV and, I was just fascinated by the buildings here and I finally got to walk around it. And it's so, it was so different because it's so quiet. It's like nobody there now. <laughs> and when I walked around and I saw this image, I love the symmetry of it. And I'm a little bit of a space cadet. The building looked kind of like a big flying saucer. So I took the picture, but I was a little disappointed that if you look at the original, there was like a big ban- banners on half the glass. So that kind of ruined right. things. So. Right. That picture kind of set for a while until like yeah. about a week ago, and I started yeah. messing with it. I said, "Okay, I got to fix this because I really, I really like it. I got to do something no, with man. it." Man, you you turned it into a work of art. I mean, it's you know, it's a it's a gray of uh, you know um, overcast day with those banners on the on the uh, biodome there. Uh, I mean, in Olympic Park there and everything, and then you took it into a whole new level and everything. I tell I tell you, Ty, you're very very talented. And, um, you know, another another shot here, which I rarely want to mess with is the flat <laughs> iron. I rarely mess with my flat iron building. But I have to tell you, you took this and you turned it into something really wicked cool. I, I really like this because it really works well together. It's very it's very futuristic. It's very different. Uh, it's 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 art and it's it's creative. And I commend you on on always being creative and always keep trying new things that way. And you're an inspiration to many, I'm sure you certainly have a rave reviews and accolades (laughs) from all your community and friends who have joined us tonight. They've made this, excuse me, folks, they've made this show a uh, wonderful show tonight with all of their contributions. I thank you for joining our spin it social community, our spin it social hour community spin it social is my brand. And uh, I welcome everybody on board. Please join us every other Thursday here at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Support our photographers, support our community. Uh, I'll do this for as long as I can every two weeks uh, and bring on the best of the best. I have three phenomenal women, photo- female photographers coming on in the next uh, month uh, or so. I'm going to announce one right now who's coming up next. But um First, hi, tell everybody where they can find you one more time. We've been showing it the entire hour here, but then I'm going to announce our guest next week and uh, one little other promo, and then we're going to say good night. So, But please stay on after I take you off the screen for a minute. But please, uh, where can everybody find you, Ty? Um, you can find me on Facebook, and but mainly Instagram. I post there quite frequently, almost okay. every day. Okay. I have that, um, Ty underbar, Chi underbar photography on Instagram. Okay. Okay. Well, Ty, I thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure collaborating together on this show. Um, uh, I appreciate uh, your support and uh, being part of the community. And you certainly have a lot to contribute to photography and and design and creativity in general. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you backstage in a minute. Okay. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care. Hold on one second. So, folks, I want to tell everybody I'm going to uh, stop the screen here and I'm going to come on for it. And I'm going to tell everybody, please hold on for one second so you can hear about my next great guest. And you're going to really love this one, folks, just as much as Ty. Uh, all my guests, uh, I just love them all. Well, next uh, in two weeks from now, on Thursday, March 18th, we're bringing back guest number two from the Spin It Social Hour. It's been a while, and we need to catch up with her because she has been doing phenomenal things. She's what I call a phenom in the photography industry. I think she's going to be one of the greats. Uh, she's already proven herself in many, many 
projects she's worked on. She's been published in the Washington Post magazine. Uh, she's been part of the seven um, uh, collective intern program. She's worked with them there uh, and uh, many other, the Women photo- Women in Photography Network. Um, and I'm going to do my best to continue to bring on many, many women photographers on the show. Renita is one of three coming up. Uh, I'll save the rest for surprises as we come, but get ready for them. But Renita will be joining us on Thursday, March 18th, 9 p.m., 7.30 a.m. India time, uh, IST time. Renita3Roy on Instagram from Kolkata. So join us then, please. It'll be a phenomenal show. And then I just want to give a shout out to my dear colleague and dear friend, Sri Srinivasan and Neil Parak and the NYT Read Along crew. This Sunday, join the NYT Read Along crew every Sunday for one of the best shows that you can deal with, with media, journalism, and uh, all some of the best journalists around, not only New York Times, but here we have host of the City University of New York. I'm a proud Baruch grad myself, uh, proud all the way through. Uh, one-to-one interview show uh, with Cheryl McCarthy, former Baltimore Evening Sun, ABC News, New York Newsday, and New York Daily News. Join Sri Srinivasan on 8.30 at 8.30 on Sunday for this NYT read-along. We love this show. And uh, finally, once again, I'm simply going to tell everybody that um, Spin It Social is open for business. Please connect with me if you need a uh, live stream production uh, social media uh, and visual strategy. And I'm always looking for that new home. So wonderful to be here with everybody once again. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. I have to tell you, it's a pleasure every two Thursdays now, 9 p.m. Stefan Kaplan here for the Spinach Social Hour. Please, number one, be safe. Take care of you and your loved ones and your friends. And I wish you all well. See you in two Thursdays on March 18th with Renita Roy. Take care, everybody. Good night.